the whole point of us doing what we're doing, dude, is like we just really, really are infatuated with people playing better golf and enjoying our yeah. game more and the spirit of the game and um like not to get all sappy or anything but like i love the game so much and i just want more people playing golf and then when we really get into it i would love to create like help create pga tour players you yeah know, from like a young age like 12 years old all the way up through you know they sign their nla nli go play college golf go through the college process and then turn pro and then work up you know professional ranks and go play on tour and make a living of it. Like that is freaking yeah. awesome. Right. Is, is being like a mentor and, and a coach for somebody like through that whole process. That's the goal. Right. Along Dude, with your, like, you your know, positive vibes are, are palpable. Like it's so cool. It's so cool <laughs> to see someone just like love what they do and like know exactly yeah. what they love. Well, dude, get, give me your, your story, man. What, yeah. Uh... So a background on me. Um, so I started working for Gary like 12 years ago. I was okay. a paid ads guy. So I was doing like Facebook ads before that was even a thing. And yeah. then I started, he was investing in a lot of startups at the time. I got obsessed. I, and I really liked starting something from scratch. I loved like the spirit and energy of startups. And so yeah. I started work, he was investing and I was helping out with their paid media advertising. So we've got a product, we'll make a video about it. Then we'll you know run some ads behind it. We'll target it to the right person. And, you know, they'll go to your website and check it out. And so after a couple of years of doing that, I left, I actually started my own thing. It was a golf clothing subscription company and cool. we and Gary was my first investor. So I left, did that for five years. Then we sold that like two and a half years ago. And um, the next step for me was like coming back. I didn't know what to do. I came back and now I'm back at VaynerMedia working, helping with small business stuff. So the same like growth paid media work that I was doing before. Um, and so in that 10 years, I became really close with, with Gary and more specifically uh, with his younger brother, AJ, who ran VaynerMedia at the time. Mm -hmm. That runs a company called Vayner Sports, which is like a NFL. Yep. And they've got baseball and a bunch of other first. They, they actually, funny story, they got a, Gary and AJ got a request from this kid. He was, I think, like fourth or fifth at Wake Forest. Like he wasn't one of the top guys. And so there, he reached out to them and he said, Hey guys, like we, you should start, you know, Vayner golf, like Vayner within some Vayner sports, you should start a golf division. And sure. they were like, Oh, you know, it's not the right time. We passed on it. And, um, turns out that guy was wheels, <laughs> and they're like totally <laughs> kicking themselves for <laughs> wow. passing on, on Will, who's now an absolute yeah. superstar. So, um, superstar. at funny Gary golf story. And then that, that was, you know, I, at my time at Vayner, like I always loved playing golf. It was hard to do in New York and AJ and I actually bought, I was like one of the first people that got him into playing golf and now he's obsessed. And so our okay. friendship was really built around, like we play golf every weekend together. That was like our thing. So, oh, wow. um, that's cool. Yeah. Golf is like very intertwined into, both like my personal life and then just everything I do. I love it. Okay. Going into your, your golf game and you, you sent me kind of the spark notes version of like, I need more greens dot drivers kind of erratic. Uh, I loved, how'd you put it? I'm a seven, but that's fabricated. <laughs> Fraudulent. <That's> yeah. <laughs> Fraudulent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, like what, where do you, like if you're diagnosing your game, you're the doctor. Mm. Mm. You go like, what's, what's number one that I need to like knock out and then just kind of continue to go down your totem pole, if you will. Yeah. So, um, I would say that, so, and, and it, tell me if this is too broad, but I would say inconsistency is a real issue when I'm out on the course. Like if I'm on the range and I don't have any pressure, I think I hit the ball decently well and don't have a ton of mistakes, but it's very, it's very easy for me to get like super fast or to not be thinking about the right things. And so that inconsistency out on the course, it's just like a huge 
issue and frustrating for me because I have this yep. expectation of like, oh, on the range, you were hitting it fine, but that was in a no pressure scenario. It was on a, you know, perfect lie that I've fluffed up myself. And so, um, yeah. you know, I think that consistency thing is number one. Um, more specifically, I think that the, the more consistent consistency about like, I, as far as like face contact, pretty erratic, like I'm not hitting similar patterns. And so that is, I think the sub bullet of like the consistency issue is I'm just don't have a super reputable pattern specifically for driver, like driver, I can flip the thing and I'll be super far left or I'll, I'll leave it open and I'm super far right. So for someone who like my goal is to get a lot better and be practicing and playing more, I just feel like the consistency issue is, is a huge hurdle that I need to get over. Okay. Um, putting is getting better, but it's bad. Like it's not okay. good. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I have, I think even in the last like two weeks, I've gotten a lot better about like keeping my head down on putting. Like I, I think I've got a tempo transition issue in my swing and it happens in putting too. Like it'll get real quick and, and jerky. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if that's just like, even like some of the videos I saw from TJ of just like rib sway and then like making sure that you have a transition. Like I, I don't have that. Like I go back yep. and it just jerks forward. So oh, wow. that's full swing and, and putting stroke and, oh. um, surprisingly not chipping i would think that would be a pretty common thing in chipping chipping is like decent um yep. as far as things that i'm typically a little bit less comfortable with like shit i, I mean wedges like i pull a lot of wedges i don't know why it is i, I like you're I'm, talking full wedges yeah full wedges okay. um okay. accuracy on wedges is definitely an issue like contact is okay. decent but I think okay. the the accuracy is a real issue on like that's why I'm missing a lot of greens and I'm short side I'm leaving myself with short sided chips and struggling to to make you know bogey if not double. So yep. I think I think those are the most top of mind things. Um, I think from like a course management perspective, as far as like scores go, I think I'm pretty like uh humble about that i i try my best to like pick a spot where i have a two-way miss and i've got some gaps off the tee and um mm -hmm. if i don't need to pull driver like i don't because it's not like i hit it super i don't hit it that far so yes. i have no ego about that and that uh, at least for my friend group i see that as a huge issue like my buddy travis pulls driver every <laughs> hole i'm like dude you could outdrive me with five iron and you would be in the middle of the fairway <laughs> but you have to pull a driver and your OB on 50% of these. Like, I don't, that's not an yeah. issue for me that I see with other folks. So um, was that descriptive enough? I, I, Dude, I that's, don't not, No, the more descriptive, the better, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, I think just from chatting with you, what's cool is you have a pretty, pretty solid golf IQ on you, just as far as like how to play the game, where good scores come from you seem like you're pretty cognitive dude and like to kind of get in the weeds with stuff, which is awesome. And, and our game just allows for that. And a lot of the best players that have ever walked the earth are, are that way. You see more tiger woods than DJs. Right. Right. Kevin. Nah. I mean, all those guys that get in the weeds with stuff and they understand the game. It's, it's definitely chess, not checkers. What I would love you to start to adopt is you being consistently inconsistent in your in your practice meaning that for good players because like to, to start this whole thing dude like what's a full seven iron roughly how far does it go just a solid one 175 one perfect so you could go 175 or even try to juice one at 180 185 just to like feel like a different wave of energy and then hit one full swing 120 and then hit one 155, and then hit one 130, and then hit one 170. So you're playing with energies, right? Mm -hmm. um, you could play mock nine hole rounds where you go driver, eight iron, 
three wood, five iron, like just random, right? That's so, so one, smart. I've never even thought to do that, but I love that. It's just like, yes, that makes so much more sense for a range session. Than what right. Done. And it's actually more entertaining, right? Yeah. Because, um, you know, the other thing that happens in range sessions often, like, and I would almost imagine so for you, because you're, you're a, um, somebody that likes information, likes education in the game. So you're probably going to follow obviously our account and other accounts and, and watch stuff and how the best like talk about it. And so it's just like information, information, information. And so it's easy to, if you're just going stock, that gets super dull in like five shots because you're like, I'm going to do these two things. And you start hitting it good and feeling kind of nice. And you're like, ah, oh, I'm bored. You know, without even like really consciously or cognitively thinking about it, you'll try another thing and then that didn't quite work. And then what if I paired it with this? And then all of a sudden you have tried on 40 different types of clothes and none of them fit all that well. Sure. If the analogy makes sense. Yep, right. And so it. now you're kind of frustrated and you're just trying to find like perfect and it happens one in five shots. And so you're just pissed off four times out of five, which isn't how you really want to train yourself to go play golf. Like you're unconscious, then you're, you're, you're just giving yourself information. That's like, I'm not worthy of hitting good ones. So when you really want to like pull the trigger on a shot that means something to you, whether it's closest to the pin for five bucks, bro, immediately your unconscious goes, I'm not worthy of like success right here. Right. So practice is infatuating from that standpoint because you're like feeding your conscious your unconscious you're playing with rhythms you're doing all these things and oftentimes it just doesn't translate to playing really good golf yep that kind of globally makes sense makes a ton of sense man it's a really cool perspective okay sweet that's awesome um from a putting green perspective i would like to redefine for you what a made putt is Okay, because we know what your definition in your mind is. It's if did the golf ball disappear or not, right? right. Madeness. Putt to um, uh, no hole on a putting green. Um, and what, what I want you to do is just hit a putt and deem if that's a made or missed putt. If you want to go deeper, 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 like a lot of um, like shooting a basketball, for instance, if I'm seven feet away from a basket, I'm going to shoot it. And there's this sense of like, OK, what's the amount of energy or the force that I'm going to put into my system to make the ball go exactly that far? Right. Right. Putting is weird because you guys will go, what a what a you know, you had half the equation, like you hit it right on line and it's three feet short from 20 feet. Well, if you had half the equation in basketball, there is no reward at all. There's no reward for getting close, <laughs> right? And that's a better perspective on the outlook or the intention in putting is to make everything. But making putts is like, did I put the amount of force into the ball that I intended to yep. or not, right? And so your intention and attention goes to, okay, what's a quality stroke? That's a quality stroke. And that equates to the ball going in the hole. Well, like we're crossing that bridge. A good technique creates made putts. Well, again, made putts is interesting because it can hit a spike mark and kick it in the hole. Sure. It can hit a spike mark and kick it out of the hole. And so we're left with like, fuck, that was a horrible putt because I missed a three footer. Well, on glass, it might've been right in the middle. Sure. <laughs> right. There's so many variables. Yeah. So many variables. So it's like taking more control over your game rather than letting result and outcome just deem like I'm going to make every putt today or I'm not going to make every putt today through the first five holes. What I really wanted to chat with you on is, is we've got to blend in your mind again, like the, the move that I'm making, and this is where mental game comes into. Like I think folks talk about mindset and mental game and then physical game. Like there's a wall between each and they don't get to peek over the wall. It's just like they're separated. The fact of the matter is your mindset and your mental game is elevated and you, you, you feel confident when you understand your technique and that that technique produces a good shot. Like, again, we have to breathe, like, like bridge this gap between the result where the golf ball goes, generally speaking, and the movement that I made in order to achieve that. When I, when I can like, and you, I guarantee you felt this, 
you set up above a golf ball and you're like, man, I know exactly what that feels like to hit it right there. And then the physical act of doing it is like this deja vu moment. You're like, yep. And those are your best days. Right now, other days you feel completely different than that. Right. Yeah. But your mindset is totally affected because of that. And now like, if you go, dude, I can hit it there or I can hit it there, but I guarantee I'm not going to hit it there. <laughs> right. Why would I be confident or have, you know, a high level of, you know, mental capabilities in that standpoint when I'm feeling like that. And that's yep. just somebody that doesn't quite understand their system of movement to command the golf ball. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, that's what it's all about is bridging the gap there. So how does my technique leak in to me commanding the golf ball at higher and higher levels. And that is what we call the system. Number one, golf club. And you, you do this, you do this pretty darn well is I love to see a golf club that swings more or less up on top of the plane here can work its way under the plane. And the reason that I want it under the plane from right here, see how the shaft is more or less like, again, more so perpendicular to my spine angle than where it is here like that would be yep. steep this is ridiculous you hardly ever see anybody there but it's in here yep the reason being if i'm gonna turn and rotate my chest and my body here i can create what's called angular force in that the golf club is going to get spit out and around so it's almost perpendicular on this side now mm -hmm. so this phase from somewhere in the like p5 p5.5 do you know the p system also i do yes okay Cool. So somewhere in delivery, P5, P5.5, somewhere in here, from right here through here feels amazing. That's what we want. Yeah. And meaning that, okay, I know what I'm doing to deliver the golf club into this golf ball to command the golf ball and where it's going to go in its journey. That's it. Okay. So what, what's really important for good rotators, good rotators need time and space. Those two things are like number one and number two mm -hmm. in, in, in quality swings. Meaning that guy, guys that aren't rotators, and there's definitely some on tour, like you look at Webb Simpson, uh, Scheffler is like this. They are more extenders in the, in the hip sockets, extension tilt guys. So this will extend. They'll start to rotate the pelvis, and then their upper body goes bonk to control the club. So this tilt, meaning L-spine bend, is what gets the golf club shallow. Yeah. But the it. problem with that is, as I go here, now the pelvis is shooting the grip or the path out to the right. And so it increases the rate of rotation in the face. Got it. Jimmy Walker is one of those. Uh, Adam Scott even is one of those, right? Compared to really good rotators, Lee Trevino, Victor Hovland, Neiman, Mito Pereira. Those guys are like big time rotator athletes. So you tend to see this big drop, which is hip flexion, and then they'll stay in this drop and rotate the chest to rotate the golf club into the strike. And the reason that we prefer that is it lowers the rate of rotation in the face so I can hit it where I'm looking more often. Yep. That's generally speaking why we like flexion rotators rather than extension tilters. Makes a ton of sense. Okay. So again, um, going back to those, those first two pieces, time and space talk about space first what i mean by space is my sternum needs to stay away from the golf ball and a couple of different just mental pictures to to see here would be like from right here if i had a wall in front of me i'm never crashing into this wall okay i i'm moving consistently away from the wall so I'm rotating away this way. That's why we like the spiral line because the angle mm -hmm. that it's on, it's going that direction. So if I'm pulling on this upper spiral, it's pulling me there away, 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 away. Okay. Which is the first point that I want to bring up with you. In your first like three feet of your golf swing, your lead side. So lead shoulder, lead hip, lead knee, like to crash into this space. Okay, so this is like sacred space in here from my hips to my knees to my shoulders, like a laser or a wall in front of each one of those. If I ever crash in front of that or into that, I'm, I'm in big trouble because I have to create space late. And one of the easiest ways to create space is to extend here. See, I get this the sternum away. Yeah, but there's the extension. 
this is going away, away, away. Lost all our leverage. Yep. Lost all your leverage. So guys that have two way misses for you, like, you know, some days I can go out and the golf ball is like up spinning and right. And then the next shot, it goes left. And you're just like, what the hell? Like I have no (laughs) command over the golf ball whatsoever. It's like the most (laughs) terrible feeling ever. Right. (laughs) That's why it's because they're always going to be an extension here to shoot the hub path or the grip out to the right. And that's what shoots the face and, 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 creates more rotation. So you either end up going, I'm hooking it. So I'm just going to block it spinning right one. Right. Or it just kicks early and there it's gone left. Mm -hmm. So I would love you. You can do this at home really easily too, like a chair. You just take the club and just hug it and get in there as close as you can, where this is like almost touching your hog. Okay, and it's, you're just off of it. And I want you to increase this space. So if I just turn here, so I'm just like banging into this. Yep. From here, I want you to increase the space away, 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 that way. And you'll Got see it. when I do that, if this upper spiral keeps pulling me there, if you watch my lead knee, it almost wants to hide under the trail knee. Compared to guys that, and like if I do that from a face-on perspective, See how my, my head will move off the ball a bit? You can move your head, your ribs, as laterally as you want, as long as you keep trail hip flexion. So this would look ridiculous, right? right. Okay. But as long as you have some amount of trail hip flexion, you can go away, 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 all day long. Okay. Compared to if I stay centered, like my head stays centered and I turn, this lead knee is just going to crash immediately. Yep. See the yep. difference there? Yep. Make room late. Okay. The other interesting thing, well, again, yay so far? Absolutely. And that that okay. kind of like humping move has definitely been an issue. And that's now making sense to me of like, okay, we've got a space issue and and that's causing that. So connecting dots that I knew were there but did not understand the those dynamics. So super helpful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so if we can, and again, we'll just, a good, a good point in space for you to look at is your sternum and the distance away you are from here to the golf ball. And it is always okay to add space. It's never okay to take it away. Mm-hmm. Okay, meaning that from the initial um, setup position. So if I'm going away, 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 okay, this is like a foot further away than what it uh, originally was. Now it gives you the opportunity to drop back in here. See how this now, because I'm dropping, is is getting back closer again? That's okay because the club's still over here on my right side. If, if, I, if I'm a guy that's here and then I start to work away, 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 the matchup is to fire the club down. So now it's not on my right side anymore. just shot back out in front of me. So yep. it's this guy that's like close, make more room, right? <clears throat> obviously crazy exaggerated, but you see that pattern a lot. (laughs) Okay. And there's some amount of that in your pattern because of this crash here. So this space didn't increase. So now you got to create the space late. So it's a way drop now. Well, if I'm using the upper spiral on the other side too, like if I'm hitting a shot towards the screen, so there's my away drop. If I take this, this spiral line and I curve it in the same direction, away, 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 away. Well, now that away allows me to shoot the energy of the club out. So you'll feel away, drop, away to shoot it. And you got all the space in the world. Because those are the two ways to create room here. Either spine extension or hip extension, which is pretty much one and the same. If I hip extend, then I'm going to spine extend. If I spine extend, it's going to leak and, and, and hip extend. So now I'm away. Right. Or I could curve this away. And that's what's going to manage the face for you. Got it. So I would love your your little reps. And this is what goes back into the consistently inconsistent is let's hit a shot that's full um, range of motion. But the golf ball goes 50 yards. So I'm curving away, drop away. And just pitch them out there. Yep. And what you want to correlate is this distal piece, the club, 
compared to the proximal piece, they marry from this P5, like everything that you're doing away to drop is so that now from right here, all you have to do is curve your sternum away and let the energy in the club release out. And that's what's going to make you feel amazing. Ooh, this feels amazing in here when that's the case. But that's like the biggest global hurdle that you have to like achieve. Yep. And it starts in this first three feet. Whoop, you'll feel over here. Gone. Rather than turn and stay on it. Away. And then hit. Got it. Cool. That's awesome. I can't wait okay. to drill this. <laughs> Perfect. The only other thing that I would love you to be able to do just from a, um, a training perspective is with driver, I don't want the golf ball ever again to start even one degree right for you. Okay. okay. We can get back into like how to hit some, if you really like a draw pattern, we can totally do that. But I want you to be able to start the golf ball either down your line or any amount of left that you want. Got it. Through rotation. Okay. So, and, and the reason being is that I need you to hit the golf ball where you're looking. So if you start at left and it cuts back on it, what a great safety shot. And, but it is so difficult to start a golf ball left through body rotation. I mean, you can do it with the arms like that's okay, but that's not a, that's not a golf pattern. So your left shot is more from up here. As you drop, you're going to start at left because you're going, okay, I'm going to turn to send it here. Mm -hmm. So like that, and that, that will leak into what we call sacred move and the sacred moving away from the target. Because if I'm going to start at left after I drop, my ass has to go right to like have this opportunity to send it over here. Right. So the sacrum just goes like once I drop gone here to send it there. If that makes sense, right? It does. So, um, and you can do it with irons too, but definitely with driver, you're just going, I'm here and it's over this way. Yep. But you'll feel the face forever. Like it never like restructures in here. That's a huge like, issue. Yeah. Yep. That, that flippy face is just like, that's the chronic issue for me. So the, this is sounding like the perfect solve. I just need to get, this drilled and feel comfortable with that because this sounds yep. great. Yeah. Okay, cool. And they marry, right? Like this space that you've created here will now allow you to drop, like you'll have to drop a little bit and mm -hmm. then you would just curve this away. There goes sacrum move. And then as this starts to turn, see how it's like going away. Like from here, you can see it better. See how like my sternum is going away from here. Like it was out here and now it curved over here. Yep. Well, it only turn like this can only rotate as long as I have flexion in the hips. So there's sacred move, right? Boom. And now I can send it here. Send me some low rep like swings because we're going to have quite a few uh, sessions after this. Okay. Just send me, um, send me swings and kind of how things are feeling like honest assessments of like, okay. okay, this feels good or feels cruddy or I'm not feeling this. I don't know how to match this up, whatever it is like just send it over to me and it takes me two minutes to fire a video back to you. Dude. 